Howdy. Welcome to another episode of the Terry and Frank Show. We're really glad you're following us. We've had a great series going on the human factors of leadership. I think it's been really interesting today. You're going to love it because we're talking about some mirror experiments and what they might mean to you, not only as a leader, but as an individual. Uh, I'm Frank Wander, the founder of People Productive. We help companies most effectively use the talent that they have. Tara? Hello, my name is Terry Mays, and I'm a certified culture engineer with focus on understanding the human side of business. So without further ado, let's get into this. Uh, we're going to talk about a few different experiments involving mirrors, what came out of it, what they found, and what it might mean to you. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to share my screen quickly. Okay, so here is the very first one, mirror experiment, how being watched changes you without knowing. So let's talk about this one just a little bit. You could find this online, Jason Goldman. Interesting. Uh, here's what happens. This article is about an experiment where they put candy out for kids on Halloween. There's three kids involved in the experiment. They talk to them and tell them, look, please take one candy. They close the door. Somebody's watching. And in the experiment, they monitor how much candy the kids take and they run it. And then they change the experiment by having a mirror there. And it turns out that when the mirror is there, much less candy is taken. The kids really just can't take it if they have to watch themselves being bad, which is very interesting. They ran this experiment also, and I read about it years ago at a train station where they had newspapers on a stand. It was an honor system. You put X amount of money into a little bucket. It said, you know, please just take one paper, put the money there. And I think when they ran it without the mirror, half were stolen. And then when they re-ran it with the mirror, only a quarter of the papers were stolen. So this says a lot about human psychology, which is very interesting. You know, people have a sense of self-esteem and self-awareness, and, you know, they don't want to lower their self-esteem, even if it's only them watching. But if they're not watching, they have no problem doing it because you know, hasn't changed their image of themselves. People's self-image is very, very important, actually. Right, Tara? Yeah. I think this is extremely fascinating. Um, I had not heard of this before. So mm -hmm. it was very interesting to me to see that just having a mirror there where people could see themselves doing the wrong thing kind of curb their desire to do the wrong thing. It Amazing, almost right? forced them, you know, you feel like, big brother is watching and then when you see that big brother is you and that you're watching yourself it just really is super fascinating to me that it changed people's behavior you would think that because they already had the desire to do the thing that they wanted to do that seeing that mirror wouldn't have made a difference so to me that yeah. is just fascinating that people actually changed what they were doing based on seeing themselves do it yeah even though they knew they could get away with it because they got away with it, like at the newspaper experiment, they were getting away with it. And then when the mirror was there, suddenly they changed your behavior and put the money in. Right. Really interesting. Right. So this, I, I okay. think, too, that it speaks to just the human nature that people inherently now there are rotten eggs everywhere. Let me just sure. say that from the beginning. But most people inherently want to do the right thing. They really do want to be helpful and kind. And they don't want to just walk around being grouches and being mean to no, people. Not at all. It's just not the way we're wired. We're wired yeah. to be helpful human beings. And so um, to see that this study has been done where people are actually doing the right thing because it's the mm -hmm. right thing to do because they know it and they're responding, that is purely amazing. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. So this, this is actually interesting because they've done other experiments where when people publicly announce they're doing something, they're so much more likely to do it. It's the same thing, right? The reflection. They're worried about the reflection. So if they don't tell anybody they're doing something, the likelihood of getting it done drops considerably. But if they say, hey, I'm working on the following items this week, I'm gonna get this done, I'll let you know at the end of the week, that's a self-control you can put in place because you don't wanna disappoint your coworkers and let right. them know, say, hey, look, I do much better when I make a public commitment, I'm letting you know, I'll let you know if I get it done on Friday. Boom, right. 
you're more likely to get it done. So people who have self-control issues, that's one thing they can do because other people are watching. Right. And now and that there's somebody there to hold you accountable, it just changes the, the drive and the desire that you have because you don't want to let the other person down. You don't want to seem like the kind of person that doesn't keep your commitments. So you have a little bit of an extra drive to do the thing that you said you would do. That's um, right. Integrity is a huge thing. And so you want to be that person that, especially in the workplace, if you say you're going to do something that you actually follow through and do it. And if you don't do it, you have a really good reason for not doing it, but not just that, oh, I didn't feel like doing it. Your yeah. team and you know others are depending on you. So you want to make sure that you're following through and keeping those commitments. And that's really how this ties back into the workplace of seeing that integrity come forward. Yeah. And as a leader, certainly, you know, having that Monday morning scrum meeting where people go around and say, here's what I'm going to be getting done this week. This is what I'm working on. Right. Uh, that that is effective. So we know from human psychology that works because they're not going to want to let other people down, you know, even if it's only themselves. Let's look at another experiment quickly here and see what we could take away from this. Oh, almost hit stop recording. Wouldn't that be a disaster? Okay. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> Good one, Frank. Um, here is, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, this one here. Mirrors don't lie or mislead. Oh, yes. So here was a finding. Other researchers have determined that mirrors can subtly affect human behavior, often surpri in surprisingly positive ways. Subjects tested in a room with a mirror have been found to work harder, to be more helpful, and to be less inclined to cheat compared with control groups performing the same exercises in non-mirrored settings. So reporting in the journal Personality and Social Psychology, these researchers found that people in a room with a mirror were comparatively less likely to judge others based on social stereotypes about, for example, sex, race, or religion. So imagine that. Yeah, that's, again, very fascinating to see that just having a mirror there. So it doesn't really matter um, whose eyes are watching or who you think is holding you accountable. Even you holding yourself accountable will cause you to do things in a much better way. So just seeing yourself in the mirror it's yeah. almost like you don't want to see yourself in a negative way and not following through or doing something that you clearly know is wrong would cause you to feel like, you know, I'm, I'm not living my best. I'm not doing my best. Mm -hmm. And that automatically just forces you to want to do your best. So I think it this is really cool psychology about the way that humans are wired. Yeah. And, you know, people do want to maintain their self-esteem and their self-image. There's no question, tons of experiments, you know, are, are, have been conducted in this area. And I think it speaks to that too. You know, they want to be the best selves. And we know that people, you know, at work who monitor their behavior tend to do better. And this is a way for them to monitor, quite honestly, they could see it in the mirror. But, you know, very simple technique. How about Zoom? I wonder, Tara, if people seeing themselves online in the Zoom meetings are going to behave differently. Uh, I don't, no one has obviously run an experiment on that, but who knows? Right, right. You bring a, a very good point. Um, I know that whenever my camera is on, I'm always so self-conscious about, you know, how do I look? Is my hair out of place? Do I have something in my teeth? Or, you know, I'm just kind of like always checking to make sure that yeah. it's, you know, just right because I want to present well. But I do wonder what impact that has. I know that when I have commitments and I've made commitments and I've set deadlines for myself to get something done, I am much more likely to do it when I share that commitment with somebody else. And so if I'm going to be on Zoom or in Teams and I have to show, you know, if I'm there and my camera is on and I have to say it to other people, then I'm much more likely to actually finish. No question, that. especially if everybody knows that on Friday, you're going to report out on how you did. Right. right. Now you've got to not only disappoint yourself, but you got to let others down too, which is much less likely to happen because it affects your self-esteem and, and, you know, group esteem, right? Right, right. When there's an audience watching, for sure, you want to make sure that you're doing your best. So it says camera on meetings are ultimately going to be more effective based on this research, right? Yeah. And you're more likely to be engaged. 
So mm-hmm. if my camera is off, I can be doing other things and check out. And mm-hmm. I'm not really focused on what's happening. It really takes a lot of effort to focus in on what you're doing when you're in a meeting with the camera off to stay on task. It's much more effort to do that. But when your camera is on, you feel like people are watching you and then you you tend to be more engaged and you're paying more attention. Yeah, yeah. So here's another very interesting one about uh, people recognizing themselves. This is a picture experiment. So looking at themselves again, um, here, this was in the personality and social psychology bulletin, but they described experiments in which people were asked to identify pictures of themselves amid a lineup of distractor faces. Participants identified their por- personal portraits significantly quicker when their faces were computer enhanced to be 20% more attractive. So they were also likelier when presented with images themselves made prettier, homelier, or left untouched to call the enhanced image their genuine airbrush face. But interesting. Now they attributed the people identifying the pictures that were 20% better looking more quickly to the fact that they have an enhanced self-image in their mind. Right. Self-esteem. That's why you don't want to diminish anybody's self-esteem. It's just so important to people. Right. It you can be it Yeah, you want to build it up. As a leader or coworker, you want to be support other people's self-esteem. Right. You do a great job with that. Um, You do really good with telling people um, how good of a job they're doing or if they're really good at something, you don't mind letting them know. So that is very helpful because a lot of times people are just a little bit afraid to be honest about it. They're a little bit worried that they can't do it or that they're not good enough at it. And so to have somebody to encourage you along the way, it really does make a huge difference in your self-esteem, especially if you feel like, you know, you're doing this show with the great Frank Wander who has studied oh, behavior psychology <laughs> for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it really does help a lot that you encourage and inspire and you don't ever talk down or make people feel small. And you have a lot of experience and worked in a lot of different places. So um, yeah. but that, no having problem. that kind of attitude towards other people is huge. Well, it's thank you. I, there is that great experiment on people rise to meet your expectations. We should talk about that. And yes, uh, I think we do that next week. Uh, matter of fact, we should cover that because that is usually important. And I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. It's enormous. And it just absolutely is the case. People feel your expectations that you're setting. Right. For. There's no doubt about it, right? Right. It works in the positive and the negative. So if you expect the people to disappoint you and to always make errors and not ever be on time and all the negative things, people will meet that expectation. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more you speak that, the more people are going to do what you're speaking. So if you want something positive, you've got to say something positive or it's never going to happen. Yeah. And I'll tell you, if, if you have a negative perception of them, they're going to feel it. You don't have to say anything. Right. They're going to feel it. There's micro expressions and all these other things that, you know, you can't really detect them. Right. But in fact, they're taking place. Right. We and know that the mood will be less if you don't really have high expectations for someone. When you meet them, that mood is just going to come off a little, a little less animated and they're going to feel it. You're not right. excited to see me. Absolutely. And it's that vibe again, you know, that sense of belonging. Vibe. People feel yeah. like they belong in that convert, even in a conversation with another person, you feel a vibe from that person. And either you stay in the conversation longer because you feel accepted and wanted and welcomed, or you cut that conversation short because you feel mm-hmm. like, you know, I don't really want to be in this conversation anymore. I don't feel like they want to have it, the conversation with me. And it's not necessarily that the person said, hey, stop talking to me. It mm-hmm. was the micro expressions. It was the sense of belonging mm-hmm. that you felt when you were standing mm-hmm. there having the conversation. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So these things are all enormous. And you know, I, I encourage all of our listeners to really think about these things, digest this, apply it in your own life. What would it mean if you had to mirror all your activities? 
You know, what would happen if you were constantly letting people know that you were going to be doing something and letting that desire to perform well in front of other people help you be better? You know, use it as a leader. Uh, the Zoom meetings, having camera on meetings so people have to observe how they're behaving. This is going to change things. We know it. And it's, it's happened in every experiment. Yes, so it absolutely. Really does matter. They matter. Um, these seem like very insignificant things, but they really are just ginormously important. I can't yeah. stress enough, but they, they just really are so super important in the workplace to have people that are, you're able to count on. You know that they're going to do what they say they do. All yeah. of these things, you know, you mentioned earlier about the scrum meetings and having people be accountable for what they're responsible for, just keeping up with their deadlines. All of that matters so deeply. Oh, in it's family. huge. Look, it's, it's huge. huge. And look, they can hold themselves accountable. You, you, you can't make people accountable. You just can't. People are accountable because they want to be accountable. Right. And you've got to tap that in them. This is about the most effective use of talent, creating an environment where people are both motivated and able to give their best. That's what you want to achieve. And these are tools to help you do that. Yes, absolutely. It really matters. So any other thoughts, Tara, as we, as we end another incredible episode of The Human Factor? Yes. So remember, Big Brother is watching <laughs> and, <laughs> yes. and Big Brother just might be you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you could be your own Big Brother. It's true. Yes. Put the mirror up where you're working so you stay on, on, on point, you know? Yes. But anyway, we thank you for coming and don't forget to smack that bell and subscribe, share the video and send us your comments. We love, uh, we love having people here so we could talk to them. Take care. Thank you. Bye for now.